nine years as the very reverend pastor of a New Life Church in the borough of the Bronx. Quiet in your chambers. Let's bow our heads. Father, we pray for your guidance and wisdom today as we move forward the agenda of your people in New York City. We specifically lift up to you the precious people in Puerto Rico who are in dire need of help in their most difficult time in the history of the island. We call upon you to love on them through the generosity of those who are responding right now. We ask you for now for your grace and favor to fall upon us. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A motion to spread the invocation. Uh, Council Member Miller. Um, I now move to spread the invocation in full upon the record and thank Council Member uh, Cabrera uh, for that prayer. Adoption of minutes. Council Member Matteo. Motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of August 24th, 2017 be adopted as printed. So moved. Um, messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M552 through M556, various applications. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Excuse me. Coupled on call-up vote. Baron. You said 556 as well? You included 556 in that, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so then, yes, coupled on call-up vote and ask for roll call on all land use call-ups. Barron. Aye. Borelli. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Carnegie. Aye. Crowley. Can I have uh, permission, Madam Public Advocate, to vote on all calendar items? Yes. I vote aye. Thank you. Deutsch. Aye. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Ferreras Copeland. Aye. Garodnik. Aye. Gentili. Aye. Gibson. Greenfield, Gordenchik, Johnson, Kalos, Aye. King, Ku, Aye. Kozlowitz, Aye. Lansman, Aye. Lander, Aye. Levin, Aye. Levine, Aye. Mizell, yes. Mealy, Menchaca. Aye. Mendez. Aye. Miller. Miller. Palma. Aye. Perkins. Reynoso. Richards. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Vaca. Valone. Aye. Williams. Aye. Matteo. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Speaker Mark Viverito. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 39 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. All quiet in the chambers as we now hear from the speaker, Melissa Mark Riverito. Quiet in the chambers. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate, and good afternoon. Buenas tardes to everyone. Uh, before until I get the, into the points of my uh, speaking here, uh, I wanted to just recognize that we have Adrian Adams with us here in the chamber. And we still have a little formal hurdle to go through in terms of the general election, but will soon join us in the chamber right after that. So welcome here today. Um, and so to begin today, I want to also take note that, uh, that October is a National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. One in four women will be a victim of domestic violence or survivor at some point in their lifetime, and thousands of New Yorkers seek help to report abuse every year. Along with our Women's Caucus, I encourage everyone to participate in the New York City Go Purple Day of Action this Thursday, October 19th, with City Council outreach happening from 8 to 9 a.m. in districts across the city. 
If you are interested in joining the morning events or receiving more information to distribute to your districts at a later time, you can reach out to Monica Abend in Council Member Lori Combo's office. Since our last meeting, a number of tragic events have occurred in our country and around the world. Beginning close to home, I, on behalf of this council, send my condolences to Council Member Andy King on the passing of his father, Andrew King Jr. A Korean War veteran, we thank Mr. King for his service and our thoughts are with his family at this somber time. Further out, the council would like to express its solidarity with the citizens of Somalia as they recover from the largest terrorist attack to ever impact the country. These actions must be condemned wherever they occur and we send our sympathies to the residents of Mogadishu. On the domestic front, our country has also faced some harrowing events over the last three weeks. Only days after our last stated meeting, 50, 58 innocent people were gunned down in the city of Las Vegas in what has become the largest mass shooting in modern American history. Definitely nothing to be proud of. There's really nothing that can be said here to convey the full scale of emotions this event incurs. These lives were taken in vain, period. It is well past time to invoke common sense gun control at the national level, regardless of the political implications, period. It really is incredible that there is more thought and process into regulating what women do with their bodies than what we do with regards to gun control in this country. No private citizen should be able to accrue an arsenal and no individual should ever go to something as innocuous as a Sunday night outdoor concert with the fear that they may not return home. Our thoughts are with the friends and families of those who were lost and we hope for a quick recovery for the many who remain hospitalized. In California, we commend first responders for their relentless efforts against the wildfires threatening communities along the northern coast. And in Texas, Florida, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the many other Caribbean nations impacted by hurricanes this season, we pray for no further destruction or loss of life as residents work to rebuild. And as we mentioned, the need for relief happening in Puerto Rico, and obviously I've been extremely um, personally touched by this and, and talking as loudly as I can against the uh, inadequacies of this administration. I wanna uh, ask Council Member Fernando Cabrera to um, say a few words. He just recently went down on a humanitarian trip. I wanna thank him personally for having done that. Uh, he visited some of the affected areas on the island and wanted to just share some thoughts. So uh, uh, Council Member Cabrera, if you could say a few words. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you so much for standing uh, for the people of Puerto Rico. Having been raised in Puerto Rico, this is also very personal to me. I had the opportunity last week, I just got back on Saturday, to go to the most devastated part of the island, an area where FEMA has not shown up, an area where people are literally going hungry, people are going thirsty. Please do not believe uh, the rhetoric that's coming out from certain people, they're telling you that help is getting to every place in Puerto Rico. Certainly, uh, they have it in this area, in the mountainous area, where we were the first one, team that I went in uh, with some pastors, and certainly if pastors could make it to a mountain, I'm sure FEMA could get there and bring help. The situation is dire. This, in Hajuya, there's only one supermarket open, and people who have their version of food stamp cards can't even use them. Talking about the poorest of the poorest, they can't use them because there is no means of communication. The only way I got a phone call out, I had to go to the, literally to the highest top, is, uh, top of the mountain there, which was extremely dangerous. I've never taken a road that's so dangerous that uh, to be able to have communication. I want you to listen to what I'm about to tell you. The water system in Puerto Rico is about to go through, uh, and, and through the people that I know that work, the water department there, they're about to go through something right now. They're running on generator power, temporary generators. Just generators were not meant to run for months. They're about to go down. What that means is that you're gonna have a situation where they don't have backup gener generators and people are gonna start going thirsty. There's not enough water to go around. Can't buy water anywhere, um, especially in these areas of the highest need. Uh, we need generators for those who want to help out. We need generators to go to those higher hit areas because the electrical grid is going to be built up around the island and not, they're not going to start in the middle of the island. And, and 
Based on what I saw on the mountains, no way they're going to get this done by December 15. I don't know who came out with that, number, that day. It's just impossible. They're going to have to build it uh, literally from scratch out. They're going to have to remove everything that is there and build it up again. Madam Speaker, thank you so much. And one request, if we could make a loud voice about tarps getting to mm -hmm. this area. People are living, listen, without no roofs. Broke my heart. There was not a day I didn't cry when I was over there. No rules living in houses that literally got blown away. Uh, they're living on this condition. And uh, when I asked uh, at the government level, they told me they only brought a thousand. In the 24 days that, that the hurricane hit, only a thousand tarps. I mean, that just really ticks me off. Uh, there's something like that. You never heard me speak like that in this council, but I'm telling you, it's unnerving, it's frustrating uh, to see uh, these people have to, our people, have to live under this condition, and FEMA needs to just simply show up. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank, thank you. you for your voice, and thank you for the council for listening today. Thank you, Council Member, and I know I, know I want to thank um, all the colleagues because they've been incredibly supportive of, of the efforts uh, around Puerto Rico. Thank you so much. And now moving on to the docket of the day. The City Council is going to begin this afternoon by voting on the reappointment of Dr. Robert Cohen to the Board of Correction and on multiple land use items, including the rezoning of Lower Concourse North in the South Bronx. As the representing council member for this project, I can speak firsthand to the serious time and effort that has gone into developing plans to turn the concourse into a major hub for the surrounding community. I really credit the land use team for their work with our district office, community board four, local advocates and interested developers on getting this project moving forward and implementing the modifications that will ensure this becomes a community asset for generations, including the siting of a new, of a new approximately 570 seat school at 639 St. Anne's Avenue. And at present, the remainder of the project is slated to include 600 units of affordable housing with 70% of the units at or below 80% of AMI in phase one. Community facility space to house the Universal Hip Hop Museum and local nonprofit Bronx Works. And around 2.6 acres of open space, including a waterfront esplanade, an extension of Mill Palm Park, and a public plaza along Exterior Street. The Council will also be considering Resolution 1675, 2017 today, authorizing myself, the Speaker, to file or join amicus briefs on behalf of the Council in litigation challenging the rescission or modification of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, also known as DACA. As the futures of dreamers across the nation have been repeatedly attacked, we at the City Council have made it clear that we stand with undocumented immigrants throughout the city and throughout the United States as they seek a legal means to remain in the country and that we will continue to do so at whatever level becomes necessary going forward. On the legislative side, the Council will be voting on Introduction 1720A, sponsored by Recovery and Resiliency Chair Mark Traeger, which would establish a Hurricane Sandy Recovery Task Force to analyze the recovery efforts in New York City in response to Hurricane Sandy and make specific recommendations for preparing the city for future recovery efforts. Uh, I want to thank staff uh, Jeff Baker, Malika Jabali, Patrick Mulvihill, Jonathan Seltzer, and Jen Wilcox. Introduction 1517A, sponsored by Governmental Operations Chair Ben Kalos, would amend the date on which candidate financial disclosure reports are due to 25 days after the last day for filing a designating or independent nominating petition. It would similarly provide a 25-day filing period for writing candidates in primary elections and a 20-day filing period for candidates designated to fill a vacancy. I want to thank staff Elizabeth Cronk, Zachary Harris, Rachel Cordero, Jeff Baker, and Brad Reed. Our first legislative package for today continues building upon our previous work to improve construction site safety standards. Introduction 1404A, sponsored by Housing and Buildings Chair Jamani Williams, would increase the minimum civil penalties and fines for violations of the site safety provisions of the New York City Building Code and the Administrative Code of the City of New York. Introduction 1429A, sponsored by Councilmember Julissa Ferreras Copeland, would require that workers at construction sites that require a site safety manager, site safety coordinator, or a construction superintendent receive pre shift instructions, including a discussion of safety concerns regarding the tasks and activities to be performed during that shift. Introduction 1444A, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Traeger, expand the requirement that workers at construction sites that require a site safety manager site safety coordinator or a construction superintendent receive site-specific safety orientations and periodic refreshers to all construction sites. An introduction 1437A sponsored by Councilmember Carlos Menchaca, which would double the civil penalties for construction sites with excessive violations. I want to thank the staff, 
Megan Chen, Guillermo Patino, Jose Conde, Sarah Gaspel, and Jeff Baker. Moving on, introductions 1509A, 1510A, and 1511A, sponsored by Small Business Chair Robert Cornegie, would require the Commissioner of Small Business Services to post on the city's website online business tools and resources, including accounting, record keeping, and bookkeeping service. The package would also require the Commissioner of SBS to prepare and disseminate a state of small business survey by September 2018 and to create a comprehensive workforce development plan uh, based to the extent practicable on the results of that survey. For staff, I want to thank Sylvester Yavana, Michael Kurtz, Jeff Baker, Aliyah Ali, Curly and Francisco, Terza Nasser, and Aisha Schomburg. On affordable housing and HPD reporting, the Council will be voting on Introduction 336A, sponsored by Councilmember Brad Lander, which would require the Department of Housing, Preservation, and Development to report on the amount and location of affordable housing provided through its inclusionary housing programs. The report would also include certain information about the affordable housing, uh, such as the amount and type of government financial assistance provided. We will also be voting on Intro 942A, sponsored by Councilmember Idanis Rodriguez, which would require HPD to provide housing development project information in a non-proprietary format that permits automated processing. Additionally, this legislation requires HPD to report to the Council on the completion dates, location, developer information, and the source, type, and value of all city financial assistance and other financial assistance provided by the city for housing development projects. And finally, Intro 1645A, sponsored by Councilmember Donovan Richards, which would require HPD to annually report on contributions to the Affordable Housing Fund. Staff, I want to thank Megan Chen, Guillermo Patino, Jose Conde, Sarah Gastelum, and Jeff Baker. On legislation to enhance Department of Homeless Services reporting and practices, the Council will be voting on Intro 622A, sponsored by Councilmember Elizabeth Crowley, which would require DHS to provide information to all new recipients of shelter on domestic violence, and intro 1460A, uh, sponsored by General Welfare Church Steve Levin, which would repeal provisions of the Administration Code enacted by Local Law 51 of 1993 in regards to establishing an advisory board and interagency coordinating council and replace it with a section creating a continuum of care steering committee responsible for advising DHS on the implementation of the Federal Homeless Emergency Assistance and Rapid Transition to Housing Act of 2009. In light of the serious state of homelessness in our city, and given that we are in the middle of National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, I want to give Council Members Crowley and Levin serious thanks for this timely legislation. On staff, I want to thank Andrea Vasquez, Jeff Baker, Tanya Cyrus, Namira Nuzat, Aisha Schomburg, and Terza Nasser. And finally, the Council will end today by voting on Intro 1313A, sponsored by Council Member Julissa Ferreras Copeland, which would expand Chapter 8 of Title 20 of the code, the Earned Sick Time Act, which would be renamed the Earned Sick and Safe Time Act, and which would be expanded to allow victims of family offense matters to use earned safe hours in connection with overcoming such abuse. This is obviously a very sensitive and important issue to be tackling. I want to commend Councilmember Ferreras Copeland for addressing a reality that faces both women and men throughout the city every day. Staff, I want to thank Matt Carlin, Jeff Baker, Kevin Katowski, and Kendall Stevenson. And thank you all for being here today and end communication with the speaker. Seeing no, no one interested in discussing general orders, report of special committees? None. Reports of standing committees? Report of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, Intro 1313A, Safe Time Act. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Preconsidered Reso 1679, Morris Park Bid. Coupled on general orders. LU 755 and Reso 1682 through Preconsidered LU 765 and Reso 1684, Property Tax Exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on General Welfare, Intro 622A, Domestic Violence Initiative. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1460A, Continuum of Care Steering Committee. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, Intro 1517A, Candidate Disclosure Reports. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 336B, Inclusionary Housing. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 942B, transparency regarding financial assistance to developers. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1404A, 1429A, 1437A, and 1444A, 
safety provisions on construction sites. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1645A, Inclusionary Housing Affordable Housing Fund. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 747 through LU 753 on the next page. Zoning amendments, the disposition of five city-owned properties and a special permit. Approve the modifications and refer to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rules 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. <clears throat> Excuse me, LU 757 and Reso 1685 and LU 758 and Reso 1686, zoning map amendments. Coupled on general orders. LU 763 and Reso 1687, unenclosed sidewalk cafe. Approved with modifications and coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 771 and Reso 1688 and LU 772 and Reso 1689, northeastern towers. Coupled on, coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 783 and Reso 1690, property tax exemption. Approved with modifications and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Public Safety. Intro 1569 A, prohibiting disorderly behavior. Amended and laid over. Report of the Committee on Recovery and Resiliency, Intro 1720 A, Hurricane Sandy Task Force. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the, of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, pre considered M557 and Reso 1691, approving the reappointment of Robert L. Cohen, MD, Board of Correction. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Small Business, Intro 1509 A, Online Business Supports. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1510 B and Intro 1511 A, Workforce Development Plan and Survey for Small Businesses. Amended and coupled on general orders. Orders. On the general order calendar, LU 747 and Reso 1692 through LU 753 and Reso 1697 on the next page. Come at, coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Commissioner, um, coupled on general orders, and I ask for roll call vote on all general order items. <coughs> Quiet in the chambers, please. Shh, for a vote. Quiet down. Thank Bar you. Baron. I vote aye. Borelli. I vote aye on all land use call-ups and uh, all general order calendar items except pre-considered M557 and the accompanying Reso 1691. Cabrera. Aye on all. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Aye on all. Constantinides. Aye on all. Carnegie. Aye on all. Deutsch. Aye on all. Drom. I'd like to uh, congratulate all my colleagues on their legislation and also to congratulate Dr. Bobby Cohen on his reappointment to the Board of Correction. I vote aye on all. Espinal. Aye on all. Eugene. I vote aye on all uh, land use call ups and all the items in the agenda. I vote aye. Ferraris Copeland. I vote aye on all. Grodnik. Aye. Gentili. Aye on all. Gibson. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. I want to congratulate all of my colleagues that are passing very important legislation today, but I certainly wanted to recognize our speaker for her successful lower concourse project that came out of Bronx Community Board 4. Um, I'm grateful that through this project we're getting affordable housing and the first universal hip hop museum uh, in the city of New York coming from Bronx County. Um, it furthers our efforts to truly recognize that the birthplace of hip hop is in Bronx County. So I thank you, Madam Speaker, for putting together a plan that includes housing, park space, access to school seats and educational opportunities for our young people, and I vote aye on all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Greenfield. Thank you, I vote aye on all land use call-ups and uh, all other items on the general order calendar. Gordenchik. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Kalos. Aye. Koo. Aye on all. Kozlowitz. May I be excused to explain my vote? I want to welcome Adrienne Adams. I know Adrienne for a very long time, and she certainly is going to be an asset to our body. And I vote aye. Gentilly. Councilmember Gentilly, did you want to correct your vote? Or? No. Okay, no, thank you. No. Lanceman. Aye. 
Lander. Permission to briefly explain? Yes. Thank you. I'm grateful to my colleagues for supporting intro 336B, which will for the first time make it possible for us to know where inclusionary housing developments are taking place and the information that we need about them to make sure this policy is working, something we've been trying to get for about a decade. Uh, so I'm grateful to the administration for supporting it and to all of you. Um, I want to join Councilmember Drum in, in saying thank you to everyone for supporting the reappointment of, of Dr. Bobby Cohen to the Board of Corrections, where he has really been a critical, uh, critical voice uh, for oversight and for justice. Um, and I want to give credit to Councilmember Ferreras Copeland on her Earn Sick and Save Time bill. Uh, watching on social media the last several days, the Me Too hashtag call our attention to story after story after story uh, has been really chilling. Um, and I'm glad this council is at least taking one small step in the direction of making it a little easier for women at least to report and take care uh, and be safe when those incidents take place. So thank you. I vote aye on all. Levin. Aye on all. Levine. Aye on all. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. I want to also welcome Ms. Adrian Adams to the wonderful chambers. I'm looking forward to working with you. In the future, I vote aye on all. Mendez. Aye on all. Miller. Permission to explain? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. First, I'd like to say that today I'm very proud to be voting on an important piece of legislation which will expand upon one of the, the Council's uh, uh, biggest and most re uh, recent uh, uh, accomplishment, and that is paid sick leave. And I'd like to um, congratulate Councilmember Ferreras Copeland on her leadership on this. And just once again, that demonstrates why you'd be so sorely missed around here. And, 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 and it's very unfortunate that in recent times, this has become uh, more relevant than ever. And, and so I, I thank you for your leadership. Proudly vote aye on all. And certainly, I uh, gladly welcome my partner in government um, and neighbor to the council, Ms. Uh, Adrian Adams. Look forward to great things. Thank you. Palma. Aye and all. Reynoso. I vote aye and all. Richards. I vote aye and all. Rodriguez. Permission to display my vote? Yes. I'd like to thank the speaker, Chairman of Housing, William, and the rest of my colleagues for their support on intro. 942-B, which will increase the transparency regarding the financial assistance provided to developers. As the numbers of affordable housing developments increases around the city, we must be transparent about where our tax dollars are going. Creating and preserving affordable housing helps stabilize the lives of some of our hardest working low income and middle class New Yorkers. Our fight for expanding much needed affordable housing will continue, but we must ensure developers receiving these benefits are good actors. Developers will continue playing an important role as we continue to build more affordable housing and expect that the good ones will support this bill. Thank you. With that, I vote aye. Thank you. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. I just want to welcome uh, Adrian Adams to the City Council and to the Women's Caucus. We need you there. What we lack in numbers, we make up for in our strength. So welcome. I vote aye and all. Thank you. Salamanca. I vote aye and all. Torres. Aye and all. Traeger. Uh, permission to briefly explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Public Advocate. I also want to welcome uh, our newest colleague, Adrian Adams. Uh, I want to combine my thanks for, for both bills uh, that uh, I, I've sponsored today. I want to thank uh, Speaker Melissa Marco Verito for her leadership and, and support for both. I want to thank Borough President Otto from Staten Island for his call for a Hurricane Sandy Task Force, which was very instrumental. I want to thank the Chair of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Jamani Williams, my colleagues who co-sponsored co both of these bills, Rob Newman, and Laura Popa, Jeffrey Baker, Ed Atkin, Jennifer Wilcox, Malika Jabali, Megan Chen, Anna Scaife from my staff, and last but not least, the many advocates who provided thoughtful feedback that strengthened these pieces of legislation. And I thank my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you.
And I vote aye. Thank you. Ulrich. I vote aye on all with the exception of pre-considered uh, 557 and the accompanying Reso 1691. Aye on all others. Thank you. Thank you. Vaca. Vote aye on all. Valone. Aye on all and welcome Adrian. Williams. Thank you. May I, me, may I be excused to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, congratulations to all <coughs> who have uh, bills and the speaker for her uh, land use, especially the Hip Hop Museum and Council Member Gibson. Yes, the birthplace was the Bronx, but Brooklyn raised it. So uh, we are proud as well. <laughs> and uh, welcome to Adrian Adams, my soon to be uh, colleague. I just want to call attention to a package of bills, in particular uh, 1404, uh, which is a key part of the Construction Safety Act. Many people were focused on 1447, uh, but I want to say that we as a council led by the speaker made clear that construction site safety would be more than just 1447. Uh, with this package of bills that are going to be passed today, we will be up to 11 bills out of 21 uh, in the Construction Safety Act, uh, which was the largest uh, amount of bills that we've ever heard at one time underscoring how important this issue was. My bill in particular uh, increases uh, fines, uh, and it says that uh, fines cannot simply be the cost of doing business. We need to impose penalties in order to spur real reform. Uh, we want to help bring back a culture of safety that has been uh, allowed to erode for far too long. Just today, five construction workers were injured in a partial building collapse in Crown Heights and Councilmember uh, Cornegie's district. I understand one is in a critical condition. Uh, the bill will, enforce, will increase enforcement through increasing minimum civil penalties, fines for site and safety violations, immediately hazardous violations will double from 1,000 to 2,000. Major violations will increase from a no established minimum at all to 1,000. With that, I want to thank again the Speaker, the Housing and Building Staff, Megan Chen, Guillermo Patino, Ed Atkins, Sarah Gasolum, and Jen Wilcox and Mike Toomey from my office, my legislative director. Thank you. <clears throat> Should probably vote. Uh, I vote aye on all with the exception of land use 757, 758, and the accompanying resos, which I abstain. Thank you. Lanceman. Thanks. Can I just um, be recorded as a no on 1517A, otherwise aye on all? Thank you. Thank you. Matteo. Um, no one M557, accompanying Reso 1691. Aye and the rest. Thank you. Van Bramer. Aye and all. Speaker Mark Viverito. I vote aye. I too want to welcome Adrian Adams to the chambers, to a woman's caucus of eight, and someone once told me that eight of a kind always beats a full house, sir. Thank you. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of pre-considered M557 and resolution of 1691, which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions, and land use 757 and accompanying resolution 1685, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention, and LU 758, Resolution 1686, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention, and intro 1517A, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstention. And the revised land use call-ups um, vote is 46 in the affirmative, zero negative. The introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to the committees as indicated on the agenda. And now we'll have a discussion of resolution beginning with resolution 1292, a resolution calling upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation amending the real property law to allow victims of domestic violence to terminate leases upon written notice to landlords. And we'll begin with Council Member Rosenthal. Thank you so much. Resolution 1292 calls on the state to make it easier for a survivor of domestic violence to break their lease to leave a dangerous environment. Even when a survivor of domestic violence has made the difficult decision to leave an abusive relationship, logistical questions about concerns like breaking an apartment lease all too often act as barriers to leaving an abusive environment. As lawmakers and as everyday bystanders, it is our responsibility to work whenever possible to remove those barriers and empower survivors. I want to thank Michelle Lee and my um, 
Legislative Director Sean Fitzpatrick for their work on this issue, and I hope that we'll be able to work with the state legislature to make progress on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Barron, do you want to speak on this resolution or the next one? So on this resolution, all of those in favor say aye. aye. All of those opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Next resolution is Resolution 1559, a resolution calling upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the Governor to sign Assembly 6811 and Senate 5120, an act to establish a private student loan refinance task force. And uh, we will now hear from Council Member Inez Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I just want to call my colleagues attention to this resolution, which is calling on, which is calling on the Governor to support the legislation that has been introduced by Assemblymember Marcus Crespo and by Assembly uh, by Senator, um, it'll come to me in a minute. And what we're talking about is that we want to make sure that this rising debt, student debt, that uh, young people are being saddled with as they begin to come into their own ability to get into the workplace, be addressed. And this talks about how we can establish a task force to look at how we can address those situations, and it does deal specifically with private colleges, and we're asking everyone to vote in resolution, in support of that resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other speakers, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. And our last resolution is pre-considered resolution 1675, a resolution authorizing the speaker to file or join amicus briefs on behalf of the council in litigation challenging the rescission or modification of the deferred action for childhood arrivals, otherwise known as DACA program, which provides temporary immigration relief to certain undocumented youth. Seeing no speakers, all of those in favor say aye. aye. All of those opposed? Any abstentions? Any abstentions? One abstention. Uh, the ayes have it. And now to general discussion, beginning with Council Member Ku. Uh, Madam Speaker and uh, Public Advocate, uh, I ask my colleagues to join me today in signing on to intro 1738 uh, when reporting complaints through 311 website there should be an option to submit pictures or videos under every category. This option is available for some categories like reporting potholes, but other categories like illegal parking do not have the ability to upload uh, visual images taken by person making the complaint. By making this upload feature standard across the entire website, it will streamline the complaint process and give agencies visual aids to help them correct the, co the, to correct the complaint. Finally, in deference to Councilmember Williams' bill, this LS omits housing complaints. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Williams. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I, I want to thank the speaker for uh, mentioning <laughs> Somalia. Uh, although it is African lives, I believe they are just as important as all the other lives uh, we talk about when terrorists attack. 300 Somalians lost their lives, and I hope we keep them in prayer. I'd also like to, as well as uh, keeping uh, Puerto Rico in prayer, make sure that we keep up the U.S. Virgin Islands, who has been devastated as well. Uh, they do have a, a fraction of the, the population, uh, but they are going to be without electricity on some of those islands for uh, up to six months. Many of them, like those in Puerto Rico, are living in tenements with no roofs and no walls. And so uh, let's keep both of those uh, countries, uh, who both of those countries actually, unbeknownst to the president, he, Trump is actually the president of both of those. So let's keep our pressure on him. I'd like to lift up uh, uh, and present uh, the New York City Boss Bill, as we're calling it, employment non-discrimination uh, based on re reproductive health, asking all of my colleagues to join. It would guarantee that New Yorkers can access medical procedures and medicine without fear of repercussion or retaliation in the workplace. With Trump and the GOP attacking women's rights on a national scale, we in New York City must act to defend those rights on a local level. Co-sponsored by myself, Councilmember Laurie Cumbo, the Women's Issues Chair, and Helen Rosenthal, co-chair co -chair of the Women's Caucus, along with Annabelle Palmer, 
Debbie, Debbie Rowe, Jesse, Julissa Severus Copeland, and Margaret Chin. The bill protects against employment discrimination on the basis of sexual and reproductive health decisions, which refers to any decision to receive services which are arranged for or offered or provided to individuals relating to the reproductive system. Creates a safe, a, sorry, creates a space of women facing discrimination to come forward. As we've seen when such a space is created, women speak up in strength together. I, as along with my colleague, uh, as Council Member Lander mentioned, I would like to do my best to support women with the Me Too hashtag. I'm encouraging men to join me and others who have uh, hashtag no more. Let this moment in this national conversation become a wake-up call and alert us men who say no more to despicable sexual harassment. We are listening and we support you. Thank you. And our last speaker is Councilmember Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I want to add my voice to those who've talked about uh, making sure that we don't forget the atrocity that took place in Somalia and remind people that as we talk about uh, Puerto Rico and the, and the disaster that they were subjected to, that we also remember to include the U.S. Virgin Islands, as my colleague has said. Also, I want to invite you to come to a press conference that will be held in front of the statue of Dr. J. Marion Sims. It's going to be on Thursday at 4 p.m. in front of the statue. We want it removed. We expect that it's on the list and we want it to be removed. We invite you to come and join with us. There are a group of us who have been meeting. The speaker's office has been meeting with other advocates and we invite you to come to that press conference. And finally, I want to uh, call your attention to intro 725. It's a bill that would require that upon the request of a council member that the city's chief uh, procurement officer give a status update of any of the awards that have been given, uh, allocated through that, through that council member so that we can know what was the total amount that was awarded and what is the status of what has been expended. It's been an issue that we've talked about at various times and this is a bill that seeks to get information so that we would know what happened to the money that we allocated, how much of it was spent, and how much of it may be left to be reallocated. So we look forward to the bill going forward, and we invite you to come and to bring your ideas about how to make the bill better. Thank you. Thank you. And now to close the speaker, Melissa Margarito. Well, this is record time. I didn't expect this. So um, thank you to all my colleagues again. Again, for all of the solidarity that is being expressed um, to uh, Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. I've been mentioning the Virgin Islands anytime I talk about Puerto Rico, and it's important that we not forget we need to be their voice as well. Um, and we're talking about U.S. citizens who this administration seems to be and is turning its back on, and it's uh, pretty outrageous. So uh, thank you all for that, the support, and with that, it is about almost 3 o'clock, and we are adjourned. <laughs>